Karen, what's going on? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? It's another morning, another morning to be great, another morning to have good in-depth conversations and all that good stuff, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's a Sunday. Yeah. We love the Sundays. Of course, of course. So let's talk about uh, passion. What does passion mean for you? Mm, going right into it. Um, right into it. I love it. Uh, passion for me, I have deduced the word passion down to like a driving force. I think um, for me, passion is something that helps me get out of bed every day, helps me push through moments that feel really, really hard. Um, it is what gives me purpose in life. I've made passion and purpose kind of run um, tangentially next to each other, if you will. Um, and for me, you know, my my passions are tied to many of the actions that I choose to take in life that have provided me with the purpose of building community and connecting with people in deep and meaningful ways. I love that you say that, you know, because passion is everything about us, you know, and how we came about this podcast is social media, Instagram. And I saw, I feel like it was on one of the f trending pages. And I'm like, yo, this would be a very interesting conversation because I feel like we have a lot in common. I've done yoga. I really want to talk a little bit about the boxing aspect and things like that because I see you in the gym hitting pads, doing your thing, you're moving, <laughs> you know what I mean, and stuff like that. But we'll get into all of that there. So when you talk about your community, when you talk mm -hmm. about passion, what is something that you want people to really resonate with you within everything you're teaching and personal development, stuff like that? Yeah, I think for me, one of the things that I think so um, intentionally about when it comes to community is thinking about it on a really like um, on a micro and macro level, right? Like thinking about it in, in two two ways. One, I think a lot of people think about community and they think about the people that they interact with literally every single day, like their homies, like their family, like the people they go to work with. And, and that's good. That's important, right? That's where it starts, right? On the macro or the rather the, the micro level. But the reality is, is that when you start to think about community in a more broad way, right? In a bigger, um, bigger manner, I think it has more impact, right? So and I say that in the way that I want to encourage people to be present in their small communities, but really think about how their small community impacts the overarching. Um, I think about community in the way of like, I'll pick up trash on the street if I see it when I walk, right? Because it's my neighborhood and like, you know, it should be good for everybody. Um, I think about community in the way that like the smells that I interact with every day or the sounds that I hear every day or, um, you know, people I'll never talk to, but I see them all the time because they just happen to be in my, my, my big space. Right. Um, I'm so in love with the city that I live in. I live in Washington, DC and I, um, was born here, which is very weird. A lot of people are like, what? <laughs> um, and I'm like, yeah, I was born in DC. I lived here for a short while as like a, a young, very young baby version of me. Um, I moved back in 2011. Um, prior to that, I was living kind of on the outskirts, the DMV, if you will, um, Northern Virginia. Uh, for folks that aren't familiar, it's, it's all very close proximity. I moved away. I came back and I was like, I'm, I'm obsessed with the city. I love it so much. And I think so often the city gets plugged with like being very transient it has politics in it. It's like, well, you know, not really, but there's a lot of really beautiful things that exist here, but there's just not enough people. I think that like take time to really take a ton of pride in it. So, um, for me, like when I think about community, I think about how can I make an impact on like the entire city and it starts at a really small level and then it sort of just kind of grows out. If that makes sense. I love that you say that. I love that you say that because it's like the cities we're from, the small communities and things like that, that we build. And I feel like it goes hand in hand, you know, sometimes you go places depending on where you work, the gym you go to, right. And people resonate with you. They see you all the time. Oh, you have up to this, you're up to that. Oh, you're doing this, you're doing that. Oh, I saw your post here. I saw your post that. So it's like, it's so well and rewarding. You know what I mean? I think that a lot of people that want to build a community or build a brand and get into the things that it is that we're doing, they sometimes, don't have the right avenues or maybe they don't have the right people right around them to celebrate champion them and things like that for you how did you find the celebrate celebrations and things like that to to really understand all that 
listen, we all make mistakes, right? Like in life, we all make mistakes. We put our trust in the wrong people. We uh, try to be people we aren't actually. Um, we live our less authentic selves at one point or another. And I don't know, hopefully you get old enough and, and wise enough to realize like those may have been mistaken um, efforts or energies, but they've helped you learn a little bit more about yourself and um, who is actually like in your corner. I think at one point in my life, I was very like uh, focused on being liked and consumed by as many people as possible. Right. And I think that's still part of me. I'm a people pleaser, like very admittedly. Um, I'm a giver, like I'm somebody that really wants, um, I don't like it when people are upset with me, like, and I try not to give people a reason to. Um, but one of the things that I've become more and more aware of are the people that really see me, um, for who I am. Right. And I think it's a two way street. It's also me taking time to really acknowledge people um, that are, you know, putting in the effort. And so, yeah, I've made mistakes in terms of like the people I've, I've trusted with important parts of me. Uh, and I think in, in experiences that I wish I hadn't had, right. Like loss, um, uh, failures, uh, all the things that we fear in life, um, the real, the real people have, have come out and shown through. And, um, I think I've just become a bit more intentional about certain relationships in my life. Uh, and while I see community, obviously in a very, in a very macro level, um, I definitely maintain a, uh, smaller circle of people that I trust with all parts of me. Um, it's interesting because you know this as a, somebody that puts yourself out there in social media, it's um, there's conflict in that, right? Like we find ourselves putting a lot of ourselves out uh, and people consume you and they think they know you and they think they know all the parts of you. And I am willing to share things that I think will be impactful for others, but there are still parts of me that people don't know. And I've, again, just been, I think, very thoughtful about who to trust with that. So my, my little circle is, is little, but, um, yeah, it comes with just learning more about yourself and understanding how to be the most authentic version of yourself. If that makes I sense. I love that you say that. I love that you say putting yourself out there because a lot of people don't know, like, it doesn't matter if you're starting a podcast from episode one to episode two, to episode 200, 300, 400. Right. And putting yourself out there is a full-time job. Right. With great effort comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are going to try to pull for your attention. And sometimes messages can get blurred. Lines can get blurred. You say something, somebody's triggered, they're projecting, they're doing all this, all of that. It is what it needs to be. Right. And I always say is listen openly and then maybe ask questions. Never, ever go out your way and make I like to say one of my content creator friends said, never make a 3D statement on a 2D plane. Oh, you know what I mean? That's good. And yeah. And I think a lot of people do that. They they look at Instagram, they look at podcasting, they see this evergreen platform and they make a lot of 3D statements on a 2D plane. So putting ourselves out there is it's a full time job. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, like it is. I work a nine to five. That's a full time job. And you come back and again, yourself the out there. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and then you come back again and you're sitting here and you're like, Jesus, like it's more full-time work. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people get the element of like what you do, the things that we're saying, and they like, it holds merit to them because they're like, well, what does the person say there? You know what I mean? But that's where it comes to a sense of having a sense of uh, clarity and grounding like yourself, like myself. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? With your sense of grounding that I see, where did that start from? Is it Was it yoga? Mm -hmm. Was it, yeah. was it boxing? What was it? Tell me. It was yoga. It was yoga for sure. I think um, when I started practicing yoga, I, I was doing it very much for just like a good sweat and fitness, um, which fine. Uh, it took on deeper meaning for me. And I've, I've talked about this very publicly. Um, it took on deeper meaning for me when I, I actually lost my brother to um, a drug overdose. And I needed it as a form of like therapy. Um, I wasn't ready to really address my emotions. I wasn't ready to really talk about like how I was feeling because I was so busy trying to keep 
it, my shit together for for lack of a better word and hopefully it's okay that i, I just use that word it's fine uh, don't worry <laughs> <laughs> um but i mean i very much started looking at it as a means of therapeutic work for myself that meant that i needed to find space to ground myself in my body um be aware of of the floor beneath me um feel and hear and see my breath. And I say, see my breath because I think through yoga, I've gotten to a place where like, there's times where I literally feel like I can see myself breathing in and out, or I feel colors and things like tied to it. It's a whole thing, but it, it really very much came from yoga. And, um, I think it's been a, a practice that has kind of continued to remind me to ground myself in moments that feel really hard. And again, it really just started with being more like aware of my body and my breath. Love that you say that. So when did you first pick up the gloves? Uh, my question. <laughs> I'm seeing you swing. I'm seeing you doing your thing, your movements yeah. on point. Like, oh, yes, I feel like you. you I feel like you're about to, you, you're going to surprise the world that you doing a doing an amateur fight coming up soon. Well, what's up? Talk to me. Um, well, I've done an amateur fight already once. Um, okay. I want to know in the amateur. Circle. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Want to know? Okay. Want to know? Um, yeah. I, I honestly, I picked up boxing gloves for the first time in 2019, and I was very like haphazardly doing it. I attended a a boutique boxing inspired workout, um, Rumble Boxing, uh, and it was fine. I. I didn't feel a lot of things one way or the other. I'm not a very violent person. Like I don't like hitting things. I like take bugs outside when they're like, <laughs> truly, truly that's the yoga, right? Like the yoga in me has, has grounded me in the space of like love and, and kindness and what have you. And then, oh, summer of 2020 and summer of 2020 was just so tumultuous in, in so many ways. Um, here in DC, so tumultuous. Like I, ugh, I, I, I think a lot of us in, I mean, you have COVID, you have George Floyd, you have, um, I think just a number of awakenings happening in our, our country and in the States. And then I think even in globally, and, um, I needed something else. Like it wasn't just going to be yoga for me anymore. Like that was cool, but I needed something else. So I uh, started doubling down and like attending more boxing classes and, and then doing one-on-one -on -one sessions because that's really where you like hone in on your skills. Fast forward, um, I developed this amazing community of, of women actually that, that box, um, we support each other. We're running mitts and you hear us being like, yeah, like killing it, like go out, like, you know, like all the things that whatever women do to support each other um, vocally. And then, and then my dad passes from COVID, um, which is like a story a lot of people have, right? We've all know about people that have lost people. And, uh, at that same time, I very much to the yoga point, I needed something to like attached to from a physical movement perspective. And I just started going harder and fortuitously someone reached out to me, um, via Instagram. They saw that I was doing a lot of community work and asked me if I wanted to participate in a charity boxing match, um, which would provide me with my amateur like status. Um, and I did. And uh, fast forward, I trained for four and a half months, really, really, really hard three days uh workouts and i won which was amazing but it really during that time i i look at boxing as the thing that really saved my life at the time um very similar to yoga regrounded me at a time where i was feeling quite unsteady so i love that you say that it's it we're quite similar a little bit because like <laughs> i got a charity fight coming up nice. I, it was different though because i got called out <laughs> I like you know that, what I mean? though. That's kind of inspiring. <laughs> uh, I guess they could say that, right? I got called out. And I was like, interesting. No previous knowledge on anything. You know what I mean? The, 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 the young man decided to call me out. And I'm like, okay, what is, this, what is this all about, right? And I get it. It's for charity. It's for the city. But I'm like, 
This is combat. This is competition. <laughs> this is competition. And I love myself some competition. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And things like that. And I'm with you. And I echo, like, boxing. I watch it. I watch all combat fights. Last night, there was UFC. So I yeah, watch every, I watched. Yeah. I was kind of uh, a little bit, just a little, uh, you know what I mean? But whatever. <laughs> but besides the point, you know, I think what boxing has showed me is a level of discipline even more. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm not going to go through the whole lineage of like combat sports and mm-hmm. what I did and what I didn't do and what I may start picking up on the full time. But what I like is, is that the level of discipline grounding is some hard ass work. I'll tell people this. Mm-hmm. No excuses, simple adjustments. Like you think your cardio is on point. We in the gym, we do a couple things, this and that. But like when you're throwing high volume and you got to do burpees, and you got to do push-ups, mm-hmm. and you got to do the ab work and you got to do this and you got to keep doing it. And you can't even drink a sip of water. <laughs> it gets to the point you're like, yo, are we doing this for charity or are we about to sign up for the pros? Like I feel like what we're doing. <laughs> I don't believe you should do anything halfway. Right. And I mean, like, and to your point, it's combat. And so when people were looking at me and saying, yo, it's for charity. Why are you doing three a day workouts? Like, are you taking care of yourself? Like, are you good? It's like, yes. And you know what? I'm going to be more than prepared. Fight night rolled around. I was not nervous. The only thing I was nervous about was falling down the stairs to get to the, the ring. If I'm being totally honest, Otherwise, I was like, I'm good. Like, I'm in my bag. Like, I have put in four and a half months of fight camp, which is the hardest thing you will ever do to your point. I know more about myself now than I knew about myself the first time I ever picked up my gloves. I have been challenged in ways that I could only dream of. I physically am, like, in peak, like, peak shape. Like the rest of this is just fun. Like now I get to go out and just do my thing. And it was probably like the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Full stop. And so I'm excited for you. And it should be uh, one of the most like, I don't know. I just think it's such an incredible experience to square up with somebody and then just get to show off like your hard work in such a like, incredible way. And also something that requires you to not just be present in the moment and when you throw your first jab, but like the next three punches, like you have to think forward it's chess and it's a, it's a dance and it's chess and it's beautiful. So Mm -hmm. I think boxing is like one of the most incredible sports. I think it teaches you more about yourself than anything else. Like it does. It is incredible. So it does. does. (laughs) Oh no. Thank you. Thank you. And I do. And I do receive that. You know, you listen to the pros in boxing talk about the work that you put in. The training camp is the hardest part. It's just now going in to that ring. doesn't matter Mm -hmm. if it's one-minute rounds or three-minute rounds. You're fighting three rounds. You're fighting six rounds. You're fighting whatever. Like, I'm so thrilled. I know he gets a lot of bad rap. Jake. Jake Paul, right? Yes. (laughs) And a lot of people don't understand of how he's flipped the switch and he's dialed it in. I watched mm-hmm. the documentary and I'm like, listen, oh my God, it was so good. Let's talk about that. Right. <laughs> and he, he showed now such a, an element that you can see where it's about discipline. It's about the breath work. People think boxing is just the physical. It's a mental also too. It's mental first. Everything is about mental iron sharpens iron, right? Yes. What can you pull from? What can you draw from? You see all the greatest. That's why I like, I don't know if you watched Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence. Yeah. I'm an Earl Spence guy. I'll say this right now on record. Watching Terrence's, the first episode one, episode two on sport, uh, Showtime. The first thing yeah. I said to myself, I said, when he went up to high altitude, I was like, he's going to beat him. I said mm-hmm. it. I didn't, I didn't want to believe it. But I said, he's going to actually beat him. I can't believe that I'm about to say this. And now that I'm going to come out and tell people, there's no lies. I'm not doing this for clout. No, straight up. You, you beat him. Mm-hmm. And I was like, because of the mental aspect, I'm not saying that Earl don't got the mentality, but it's about mental first. 100%. You, no distractions. Like you got to lock in every single day, you know? Yeah, 100%. I mean, it, it's, uh, and again, that's why I regret zero things about the way I changed my lifestyle during the time that I was going through training. And I know there were so many people that were having quiet rumbles and conversations like about me behind, behind my back, not in a, like a, 
a hateful way, like more in a, whoa, like what, is she good? Like, <laughs> or is she taking care of herself? Like, is she eating enough? Like, you know, like to see somebody go from, um, you know, casual fitness to all of a sudden doubling down. And that's a shift in mentality to go from being somebody that like, again, lets bugs out of her apartment or like home and refuses to call anybody like a hateful name to like seeing them want to throw hands at somebody is like a very, it's a shift of perspective. But like, if you don't have the mental, you're never gonna like go the distance. And that's in anything really, like truly, if you don't have the mental fortitude, like you're probably going to crumble under self-doubt and imposter syndrome and and all the things that hold us back from being great, right? Fear is like our biggest, our biggest, you know, enemy at the end of the day. It's our our fail switch. So absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, we all have people we idolize. You know, I come from the school of Dr. Eric Thomas. I don't know if you're familiar with who Eric Thomas is. I'm not. Eric Thomas, Inky Johnson, that's kind of like the school I come from, those guys, because they're just remarkable in their message, what they've been through. And I've always said is no matter what it is you do in life, it's what you can draw from. You just spoke in the 21 minutes of everything that basically brought you to the next level, right? And I won't want the audience to miss that because it's about what you can draw from to apply, right? It's like when you're playing Tetris and you start on level one, you got to draw from something. Like level one, level two, then you get to 25 and you get to 30, then these blocks start coming a lot faster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, wait, what's going on here? But you can't break underneath the pressure. You know what I mean? But I always say it's pressure plus pipes. That's mm-hmm. where you have to know where where's that next level I can go to? What's that next gear? You know what I mean? Can I go gear number four, gear number five? Sometimes, hell, you got to push gear number seven. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes you're going to break, like, it's the, are you able to come back? Right? Like, are you able to restart? Um, there have been many sessions, like training sessions with boxing and, and days, right? Just like life where I crumble, like I, I cry. Like the reality is that we're all human and like, there is going to be times where you're tested and how you choose to address those points and grow from them is really what's like at the end of the day, the most um, interesting thing about yourself, like what you learn the most about yourself and how you know to adjust, right? How you know to beat that next level next time, right? Is, is by acknowledging the failure, the point of failure, stepping back, reflecting on it and making the adjustments accordingly. Absolutely. For the ones that are listening to that little piece there about failure, what's one thing that you do when you, when you failed, right? We'll just, we're boxing. We're here. Mm. When you cry yeah. and you realize that maybe something happens, right? Are you crying right now? I'm going to cry. No, I'm just, oh. <laughs> I'm just joking. Go ahead. No, no. Um, I was like, I've never had that on a podcast for the six and a half years. I may cry while we're talking, depending on what we talk about. I I'm- like that. I like love that. to cry. I think it's a but good thing. But you know thing. what this shows? It shows that you're you're human. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah. I'm but, very human. <laughs> yeah. When we get when we get frustrated, because the same thing happened to me last week. Something happened. I don't want to give too much information because the ops are listening. <laughs> <laughs> always listening. They're always listening, right? And you get sometimes you get down on yourself. What is it you drew from? What did you draw from to say, hey, listen, the next day or the next week? I'm about to become 1% better. What'd you do? I think for me at the time that I was going through my training and truly now going forward, my reason for showing up was very much tied to me wanting to show myself that I could do hard things. And so I think for me, the times that I failed, the times that I felt frustrated, I never really wanted to give up, but it was definitely one of those things where it's, you're here for a reason, reflect back on your intention, let it be the reset button you need to show up just a little different next time. 
on top of that, a lot of my life at this point, the things that I've done that have caused a shift in perspective for me or have provided me with purpose are tied to very like personal like losses, right? Like yoga, my brother, boxing, my dad, like I've lost people in my life that have deep, deep meaning for me. I very much live now in this space where it's not just about proving that I can do hard things, but also acknowledging that I need to be the best parts of the people I've lost going forward. It's about legacy. It's about continuing to show up in a way that would make people that I'm honoring every single day proud. And I think that's something that a lot of people can attach to if they just take a moment to step back and look at it. We're, we're, we're having a sermon here on a Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm going to say that right now as we're recording this, you know, you know, I feel what you say because it even goes back when I think about my grandfather, mm -hmm. right? Somebody that, you know, in Jamaica, being a police officer, he's no longer with us. It's been many, many moons since he's passed away, mm -hmm. but he had to pass something down to the next person, right? It could have been whatever co cousin, it could have been whoever, but I feel like I was the chosen one to do that. And it was funny. I was talking to my to my mother about boxing, about things. And she goes, your grandfather was the one that used to be listening to the radio back in the day before watching the TV. And he could systematically break down a fight mm -hmm. after just by listening to it on the radio. Now, people hear this listening to it on the radio but you can't visibly see it mm. well you got to put your mindset there to listen to everything that's being happened because those analysts have to break it down we, we listen yeah. to analysts we listen to analysts you know what i mean in like ufc or boxing so i challenge people maybe turn off that tv if you have surround sound and just listen mm -hmm. what can you pick up what can you hear what can you feel mm -hmm. that's how you can bring great storytelling you channel it and you say, okay, this is what I need to do. Okay, this is where, boom, I slip here, boom, I slip there. I do what I need to do. You know what I mean? So it's about overcoming the most adversity that you can pull. You know what I mean? What Absolutely. do you draw from? I, I always say this, what can you draw from? You know, could be an injury, could be a breakup, you know, mm. could be getting let go from your job. What do you draw from? Yeah, I mean, we all have trials and tribulations, right? Like no human is unscathed. Um, and so I think that there's, it's so easy to say, like, there's two ways to go about it. You either, <laughs> you either let it take you down or you like, let it take you to the next level. And it's, that's very simplistic. And, and honestly, sometimes you have to be taken down before you let it take you to the next level. Like you, it can be both things. Um, but I do think for me, adversity um, has been like my greatest strength, like, and, and I have resilience tattooed on my body at this point and gratitude, right? Like it is both things. Like I am very grateful for the life that I live and continue to live, but it's not come without having like resilience and, and experiencing hard things and then proving to myself that I can do hard things as well. Love that you say that. So what's next for you in boxing? Are you going to you're going to yeah. go do another, you better be doing it. Listen, I've seen, listen, people, okay. We get to a part of the episode. People go to the Instagram. She's going to plug it. <laughs> she's going to plug the Instagram. I see you hitting. I see you slipping. I'm like, yeah, you, you probably slip. beating me in a couple of rounds. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I, I welcome a sparring opportunity with anybody. Um, mostly because it'll just make you better regardless Absolutely. of the outcome. Um, so I think, First and foremost, I think if we want to double back to what you said about Jake Paul, and we'll just touch on it really briefly. I was in the Jake Paul like hater camp for a long time. I was like, no, this man's not going to come into the sport of boxing and ruin it. He's a YouTuber, grr. And then you sit back and you're like, actually, God bless him. Like, God bless this genius, this promotional genius, because he's revitalized in a lot of ways. He's brought boxing back to the forefront. 
And I think at the same time, what's happened is that boxing has become a sport that feels still very intimidating to a lot of people, but has become a little bit more each and every day um, accessible. And for women in boxing specifically, you're starting to see like really amazing people kind of show up and be women that we can attach to, um, which is amazing because historically it's like, I guess I can quote, you know, a Muhammad Ali quote, or like, I can talk to you about, you know, Mike Tyson. It's, it's just like, it's never been a sport where you see a lot of people that look like you or that you can attach to as a woman. So it's exciting. Um, a lot of people that participate, let's say, in this charity boxing match, there's a whole segment segment of women that participate. Very few of them continue afterwards. And I think it's sad. And so something that I was very firm about is that I will be continuing this as I go forward. Let's not go. Only, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, not only because it's like it's something that I found a lot of um, personal like I don't want to success in, but it's also something that like has made me a better me. So I just did an exhibition match, like a smoker for folks that don't know. Smokers are like basically, I don't know, like elevated sparring. Um, and it was fun. I had a great time. My opponent was wonderful. Uh, but to be totally honest, I hadn't been sparring like at all before that at all. So I would say there's no winners in exhibitions, but uh, she probably won. And so like on to the next one. And if there's an opportunity to, to train full time again, I want to do it. And I want to be in a fight. I'd love to run golden gloves. Like, you know, there's, it's just a, it's something that I love. And so I don't want to give it up and I don't want to stop and I want to keep competing and sparring is a good way to do that. And so I'm, I'm doing that. And, and you can do it at whatever age I, I'll, I'll tell, see, here's the thing. That's about, real. About, Here's something I'm gonna show, and it's not even it's not even to debunk your point. I've said this when Tyson fought against Roy Jones. Mm -hmm. I said is Tyson now with where his mindset's at. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's gonna sound crazy what I'm about to say. I know people are like, you're talking crazy. It's not about the punching power. It's about his IQ and it's about the mentality now. Mm -hmm. Tyson had a hard life growing up, but if you listen to Tyson now, Tyson at his age could be a world champ. I think so. I think so. If, I mean, like, if they allow it, it the work. <laughs> if they allow it, I think he can, because the thing is, it's just, I know that again, father time catches up to all of us. Those younger guys are a little bit different. So, you know, but I'll be honest. I think Tyson can be a world champ. So what I'm trying to say, it doesn't matter what age you are. I, think that's I feel real. like the older you are, the more wisdom that comes. And there's some, you know, younger folks that I know in their twenties, that are teaching me new things, saying new mm -hmm. things. They're 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 adapting to what's happening in technology. They're adapting what's happening into the world. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Me being in my thirties, it's it is what it is. You know what I mean? So it's like going in that ring and just knowing that you can do whatever you want to do, push your limits. Mm -hmm. You know, father time does catch catch up to you eventually, but you can sometimes defy father time if you know what it is you're doing, and pro and just delay it just a little bit. You could delay it for like five years. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? I think mentality like can drive your physicality, honestly. Like I, if you have the mental resiliency, if you are showing up, like you, you can, your body is like a pretty amazing thing. I mean, I literally thank God every day that I wake up and that my body works and it moves in the way that I request it to. But your mental game is really where you need to focus. So again, going back, it's like this, all the things that you do every day, like, yes, <laughs> good. Yes. I'm glad that, you know, we all like have that physical, um, you know, ability, but it really only comes if you have your mental in the right place. And so I almost say that like focusing on that is, is more important than running that extra mile, right? Like it's really about, is your head in the right space? If your head's there, you're not gonna just run an extra mile, you're gonna run three extra miles. 1,000%, 1,000%. One and oh, soon to be two and oh, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first, right? 2024, it's coming. You can have a two and oh. I hope so. Oh, you're so. going to, I guarantee you. Just, I put it out there, so it's gonna happen, it has happened. Yes. You're, uh, before we get out of here, your podcast, your podcast mm -hmm. brilliant work right i love when i see podcasters putting in the work 
you know, chasing their goals, chasing mm-hmm. their dreams, saying the things, having those great intimate conversations that need to happen, right? Mm-hmm. People don't understand podcasting is not just about speaking into a mic. It's about saying the right things. And sometimes you're going to ruffle some people's feathers. That's why I always say is if you're listening to a podcast, please don't come up with preconceived notions. Please just mm-hmm. don't. Just leave them at the door and then ask questions. Don't try to throw subliminal shots. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, this girl or this guy said this. It happens all the time. It comes to the territory, yeah. right? And sometimes you just got to eat that. You know what I mean? And then use that as your fuel. <laughs> and exactly. then you just never know what might happen, you know? <laughs> but uh, talk a little bit about your podcast and, yeah, plug that information. Well, thank you for giving me space to do that. I really appreciate it. Come on now. Um, <laughs> I started my podcast, uh, which is called Driven By, uh, blank. Every episode is uh, entitled The Thing That Drives the Person That I Talk To. I started it primarily because I was having these conversations with folks and just coming very inspired by the things that drive them, um, their passions, how they've come into purpose through those passions. And so we're in season two. I'm about to take a little bit of a breather because you're right. It's, it's a lot. It's hard work. And I have a nine to five. You've got a nine to five. It's not my, my full-time deal, but I do know that in having the conversations that I've had with a wide variety of people, um, it has been something that has been not just inspiring to me, but there are people that reach out to me that thank me. And I, receive that. But I also, you don't have to thank me, thank these people for taking bets on themselves for having the, um, I guess, again, the, the willingness to, to fail and and to learn from their failures and then to stay focused on the big picture. And so it's an opportunity for me to highlight my community, but also not just my little baby community, kind of open people up to a, a bigger community and, and hopefully allow people a space to feel connected to the stories that are being shared. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I said before we recorded this, you know, I listened to your very first episode mm-hmm. and you've 100% got the, 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 how do I say this? I'm dubbing you the podcaster. You know what I mean? So I'm going to, so I have to subscribe to the show because you got to keep up to date. You know what I mean? And I always say is champion your friends, your family, your community. I know some, as some people hear that and it goes through one ear and out the other. But the ones that are listening to actually want to hone into that, support the people that are in your community that are putting in some exceptional work. Yes. Learn about your community impact leaders. Learn about the people that have the podcast, selling the merchandise. Heck, not every episode may resonate to you. I talk Mm -hmm. about a plethora of different things. My dating episodes are probably one of the most spicy ones, but it's not for everybody. It's not my fault. If you don't like it, don't don't listen to it. (laughs) Next. Go to the next one. But you know what? I keep it real and I like to hit on all different targets. I talk about content creation. I know that there's a lane for that. You Mm -hmm. know, I talk about overcoming adversity. I talk about sports. I talk about this. Find that episode. Heck, I'm pretty sure people's favorite Joe Rogan. They don't listen to all the Joe Rogan's episodes. I know that they don't. So (laughs) I don't listen to any of his episodes. (laughs) Right? So if you're going to champion Joe Rogan. Because he's a big public figure, celebrity eye, cool, whatever. Champion Karen, champion Rory. That's what it all comes yes. down to. You know what yes. I mean? Champion Listen to the people. show. Yeah, yes. for sure. Well, also, it's just like give yourself the opportunity to hear something that you wouldn't have heard. Because like as human beings, the way that we continue to evolve and grow is by opening ourselves up to the things that may be around us. You may not receive it always, but there's opportunity for you to potentially connect to something. If you just come in with an open mind, I also think something is so important that you just said, is just like championing your community it goes back to what I've said before. You can stay in your little micro community if you want, that's fine. But think about what you're missing out on by not giving yourself the opportunity to think bigger and to like allow yourself space to, to be exposed to more things I'm not saying that that needs to be in your life every single day, but allowing yourself that space to maybe hear something from a different perspective or from somebody that doesn't look like you didn't have the same upbringing as you. That's like where the goodness is. That's how you continue to evolve and like 
be the best version of yourself by giving yourself the opportunity to be exposed to something that feels uncomfortable or feels different. Well said. Well said. Where can everybody check you out? What's uh, yeah. what's next down in the pipeline? <laughs> well, um, folks can find me on Instagram. That's a reasonable place. Um, care, C-A-R-E underscore plumber, P-L-U-M-M-E-R. It used to be my full name, Karen. Um, but as we know, the Karens out there in the world kind of took a, <laughs> took a hit. <laughs> so I removed the N and I was like, ah, I don't know. I feel like it has to happen. Um, also, you can't spell care in without care. And that's just who I am anyway. Um, so Instagram's great, uh, for me, you know, I'm just going to continue to, to walk in my purpose, um, of building community, um, continuing to be as authentically myself as possible while also being mindful of the things that should remain like just between me and the, um, important people in my life. But, uh, yeah, you can find me there. Uh, you can find my podcast linked in my, my bio, um, or you can find me on Spotify or Apple podcast i love that well mm. keep up the good work and Thank uh so soon much. to be two and oh ladies and gentlemen you heard it first follow along on the journey if anything follow along just so you can get yourself out of bed and push yourself a little harder i think that's probably what most people find mm. rewarding from <laughs> from talk seeing about all my it. workout videos i don't know <laughs> talk about and it good luck to you good luck when's your fight november 8th okay is it is there an opportunity for me to see it stream it? <laughs> Well, the powers that be <laughs> that are listening to this episode, they better know what Stream they're doing. It. Yeah. You know what? I got I got some guys in tech. I got one of my good guys in tech. It has to be live stream. I'm not going to live stream it on my IG. I could no, do that because it's corn. But, you know, I think I think what we're going to do is this, you know, I'm going to talk a little spicy before we close up the episode. Mm. It will be recorded. Talk to us. It will be recorded. Regardless of the matter, because I know cameras are going to be moving that night. I'm I'm sure. running actually a whole document, like a documentary, you know, do like a mini vlog, this, 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 this. It's got to find all the time to do that. So all that will come out probably starting September. Mm -hmm. I want to have me and my opponent sit with somebody unnamed just to have a conversation of why we're doing this for the city. There are going to be some subliminals coming. They have to, you know what I mean? But uh I'll figure a way it will be streamed somewhere and everybody can see it and they'll be able to watch it on the main page because somebody's O's got to go. <laughs> well, I'm invested now, so I, oh, I want I've been to... invested. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm invested now, so I want to, I want to be following along and I'll be, uh, I'll be in your corner, obviously. So Jeez, you heard it here first. Keep up the work. <laughs> I love that. I appreciate you, Karen. Thank you for having me.